Hello everybody and welcome to Train Sim World 4. Today we will be driving this class 80, call it an 800, from here at London Paddington to Reading, stopping at Slough in between. Uh, we'll get the train set up, we'll get safety on, master key in that to forwards. Doors open on the left. Uh, we will be running in electric mode for this run. Because I said so. Um, uh, it doesn't can you work still. Uh, we'll set that to marker. Just because. And that's the train set up. Very um, interesting trains, these, to drive. Very, uh, you know, engaging and intriguing if you haven't quite got the sarcasm yet uh, there's a fair bit of stuff happening around the place we've got some um, 166's obviously trundling around and one or two HST's I made the scenario a while back so uh... some of the fine details I cannot remember I just booted in Let's get moving. There you go. Starting speed limit is 25. Oh, what is that? That's 30. Is that 40? Okay. Not arguing with it. Let's throw it up to speed. Uh, this is, uh, I believe, my first foray into. Um, the updated scenario planner and it's a little bit difficult to I mean it, it's I'd say possibly less intuitive than the previous one but a little bit more useful for all the faff they made about all these new train parts there aren't that many um, and the portals there are almost no portals um, and none that are really that useful but, I mean, this isn't a great route for it, because it's not like there's portals at each end, but... I think... Oh, no, I have used it on, um... Maybe have I used it on the East Coast? Um, but I, I remember the, the portals not being as outstanding as Dovetail may imply they, they would be. But nonetheless, I guess cool to have an IEP, IET, sorry, to run on um, on the Great Western, even if it's not strictly correct, and even if there's uh, no hope ever of this route being correct. It is what it is. Oh, and a realistically invisible overhead light. So I hardly heard anyone complaining about the overhead lines, so it just strikes me it's just so out there that they bothered to, f you know, it's a classic case of fix something that isn't broken. But, whatever. They'll tell no best, obviously. It's a critical issue. And in their latest roadmap, they say, oh, yeah, we'll do, um, we're not going to fix the problem. Um, because it's not great game breaking. Anyway, here, there's this missing collectible that we've got to fix as a matter of priority. So, oh, well, how's that game breaking? Meanwhile, the fucking editor not saving anything properly, not having any access to any brush materials. So, oh, yeah, why don't you patch that instead? You know, let us put grass on the route without having to obtain our own assets for it. You're yeah, having to blend our own materials. Just work with us for once. For once, work with us. Oh, 
Oh, and is this the, the first video I've made? Oh, I might not be the first video, but this will be the first time I've talked on video about Rishi Sunak. Uh, he can absolutely go fuck right off. Um, I am quite happy to see that at least some slither of um, trackage remains available for use at Euston. But cancelling past Birmingham is a... You might as well cancel the whole rest of the project. It's pointless now. The whole point of it was to free up pards on the West Coast Main Line and with no connection to the West Coast Main Line. How in the name of Christ... Like, you might free up the Birmingham trains, but the Glasgow trains, the Liverpool trains, you know, the Manchester trains, the crew trains, they all need to run on the West Coast Main Line still, unless you're going to force people to change Birmingham International or something, which is, I believe, the... which isn't even an interchange with the West Coast Main Line. There's no direct interchange with the West Coast Main Line under the current plan. And the only real issue... well, well the only real way this can be solved is, um... for Keir Starmer to come in. I, I understand he has his problems, but... I mean, they're, they're sending... oh! Uh, we're going to save 36 billion by not building the Manchester lane. It's like, yeah, but you're now making the 81 billion that you've already invested completely pointless. I, an extra 30 billion, yes, it's a lot of money, but to make 80 billion worth anything. Ridiculous. And Rishi Sunak's whole fucking joke on the war and cars and. Oh, you les is, is an awful scheme, and oh, we we got to ban twenty mile an hour zones. It's like nothing that he says is based in fact. Uh, twenty mile an hour zones have been found to delay motorists by, on average, a few seconds, up to a minute, but they make streets remarkably safer for pedestrians and cyclists. He's an idiot. I, I don't quite understand his strategy either, because I guess he knows he's not going to win the next election. But his strategy isn't trying to win votes, clearly. But whether it's to try and... I don't know, try and ruin Labour so that, you know, Labour look bad, or whether it's just to try and create more of a political divide in the UK, I don't know. It's quite puzzling. Certainly makes me um, slightly more glad of the political sensibilities we have in Australia. It, as bad as Scott Morrison was, it's nowhere near as bad as the shit that's unfolding in the UK or, God forbid, the US. Right. Oh, don't get me started on US politics, man. Anyway, anyway. Racing along through West London. Uh, let's see, where are our friendly HSTs? There's a 166 we can grab a screenshot with. It's another 166, but... Probably not that great of a screenshot place. I presume the HST... Shut up. I presume the HST is on the other side of Reading. I presume, maybe, yes, no, perhaps. Or is it not even left yet? It doesn't look like it's left. Unless it leaves in what? A um, few seconds, perhaps. But yeah, for the record, do I think HS2 has been mismanaged? Yes, absolutely. Do I think it is a necessary part of the UK's future infrastructure? Still, yes, absolutely. Do I think cancelling the Manchester leg and 
you know, more or less kneecapping the Houston Lake and kneecapping it overall and cancelling Leeds as well a few a few months back is a terrible, terrible, terrible decision for the long-term prosperity of the UK. Yes, absolutely. And there's almost no question about that. The West Coast Main Line is the, the most important main line in the UK. I know lots of people say, oh, it's just a big shiny railway to London. Yes, but it is a big shiny railway to London of critical national importance. And it's, it's the link between London and the North. The West Coast Main Line and what would have been HS2. Right? Now, now, one can argue it is a big shiny train to London. Because it just goes, it just serves Birmingham and London. But it, if it's in its full capacity, where it would have allowed people from Scotland, um, Cumbria, Liverpool, and the North generally, and especially if they committed to Northern Powerhouse Rail, or HS3, or whatever you want to call it, up between, is it Liverpool, Manchester, and Leeds, and York, or something. Um, not too familiar on the route myself, but... I know it's somewhere in that broad region. Then it would be fantastic for the North. But... HS2 needed to happen before Northern Powerhouse so they could free up capacity on the West Coast Main Line. Which, the West Coast... If you want to ship something to continental Europe or, you know, to the US, I guess, chances are it will go on a container which will go on a train on the West Coast Main Line. And if it if it's that's expensive, chances are that is because there are not many trains available on the West Coast Main Line because there is not enough capacity available on the West Coast Main Line. And how do we solve that? By building more tracks. It's the equivalent of the one more lane, bro, but for trains, so it's good. But there's no space to build another lane or another track on the side of the West Coast Main Line. So we build an entirely new line, and then two birds with one stone. We can speed up journey times between London and London, Birmingham, and the North, and we can allow a lot more capacity for commuter and freight trains on on the West Coast. If any of you are of voting age and are still considering voting Tory. I beg of you just reconsider I'm not telling you to vote either way but I think by that you would have known my, my opinion on oh, no, well, if I could vote in a UK election who I would be voting for but if, if you're considering voting Tory just reconsider because it is you know do you want more widespread privatisation they're not even that economically they're not great economically for the country, really, either. I mean, whether they'd be better than a Labour government, it's for you to decide. Because but... that's the biggest criticism I have of Keir Starmer, is he sort of just sat back and left the Tories destroy themselves, which is fine at the moment. But if the Tories call the snap election, he's got to think on his feet, because he's got almost no policies. His policy at the moment has just been to let the Tories destroy themselves and, you know, just wait, hope that, hope that comes in. And it's worked, you know, he's, what, 15 percentage points ahead? But Anyway... Anyway, we have arrived at the first station. Have these HSTs started moving? No. When are these HSTs going to start moving? Or did I set them to leave early? I may have done that because I thought they said you could do that in the new scenario planner. But if that is not the case, then that is apparently not the case. Hmm. We'll see, we'll see. That was too early. That was way too early. Yeah, fuck. Do I try to close ever? At some point? They done the crew door correctly? Oh, they have. 
Norse. I see the Azuma zooming acceleration. Pantograph's still up. That's quality. Are you going to go at any point? Oh, you fucking DSD comes on. Bloody hell. That sound a bit clumsy from the... Oh, Electrostar. Oh, fantastic. Thank God that came in. I need my daily rush of Electrostar sounds. Right, they're moving now. Quarter past. No, okay. I think they're just broken. It's all right. Also, they said, um, Dovetail said in the patch that they had, um, fixed the gangways. So let's inspect. Oh, no. They're, no, they're not fixed. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. That is a real shame now, isn't it? Can't even be bothered to test a patch before writing a whole spiel in the roadmap about it. It's pretty embarrassing for them having to backtrack in them in the forums. It's like, oopsies. We actually uh, couldn't do that because we're idiots. Also, one thing I noticed as well, um, is this, what is he called, Train Simulator Driver, who's an ambassador. There's an interesting, sort of sneaky-ish tactic, yeah, Train Simulator Driver, who's a real ambassador, that for, for Dovetail Games. He's sort of doing this unusual thing with his thumbnails. He just gets this random AI art. Like... He's got this one for the Flying Scotsman, and he's obviously just asked AI to make an artwork on the Flying Scots, like a Flying Scotsman, because it's just a man, potentially a Scottish man, flying in the air. And then, like, Train Sim World 4, how to get my Train Sim World 3 DLC to install, and it's just a picture of a sunrise with a computer in the window, or... And none of it really has... None of it... I mean, God, there are only six videos like it, but none of them have any relation to the content in the video at all. Which is a bit... A bit dodgy, but... You know. I, I realise that particular person has an actual job, which I do not, and probably might not have the time to make a full timetable or something. Uh, not a full time, a full thumbnail. Which, just interesting. Uh, just, I don't know. So at least you'd ask it to try again when it pulls up a flying man instead of a steam engine. Right, there's one, two, five. Leave it in power, notch one for now. It's amazing to see how much this route has changed since it released. Like, you've got ele fully electrified, you've got, you know, very frequent Thamesing service, uh, not Thamesing, crossrail service on most of the line. Change of operators, a whole depot closed. Go a bit more power.
It's a good line though, I mean Brunel in all his wisdom just drew a fucking straight line. Like I know the line gets a little bit more curvy outside of Reading, but I mean it's pretty good that you can just nip a bit, uh, pre-Victorian railway and was it pre-Victorian? I feel like it might have been and slap a slap some wires up and call it a high speed line which I mean technically speaking it is it's, I wish we could do that in Sydney I mean, we, it can certainly be done in other parts of the country <coughs> Geelong <coughs> but you know, Sydney's sort of a bit of a pain because every railway has some kind of geological mismatch. Like you go north and you get a huge plateau and then a river crossing and then coastal running. Um, or more or less coastal running. You go south, there's a huge pl plateau and then five hairpin turns to return to coastal running. If you go west, you have to climb a fucking mountain range. And if you go south, um, or sort of southwest, there's you know a slightly more subdued mountain range to climb. Right, and back up to 125. What is this? Is this... Ivor? No, that's on the other side, isn't it? Now, normally the pantograph automatically drops by now. I don't know. Not the end of the world. Oh, Twyford. Oh, it is Twyford. From the railway, keeping Britain on track. Banger documentary, all on YouTube. Give it a watch. Unless it's geolocked. Which it could well be, actually. I don't know, but there are UK commenters in it. Go watch it. The Railway Keeping Britain on Track. There's like five or six episodes. Good doco. Or good docu-series. Right, 95 coming up. Yep. It's actually quite a pleasant run, this one. They should just update it. Like, the Diesel Legends pack wasn't awful, but it just so desperately needs an update, this route. I know they've said they'll never will, and they've lost their first license. So, so it would seem. Bit more break. Right, and we're coming down to sixty and then fifty. All right, there's 60. We'll cruise there at 45, and our HSTs that are uh, so usefully just sitting there doing fuck all.
And we'll cruise in now. Oh, that is a nasty meme. Ah, uh, uh, that is the nastiest meme I have seen in a while, but it is so worthy. Let's have a look. Just look at that. That is so real. So real. That is... Ah, uh, they're jokers. They are jokers. Unlock doors? I have. What do you want? My goodness. They still haven't fixed the wrong side issue. Okay, so... Oh! Scenario Designer 2.0! Is broken. Still. But don't worry. They're gonna fix the collectibles on Vorarlberg. Never, never, never fear. There's always a collectible fix coming up. I wonder if I come onto Steam DB and look at the peak players for Train Sim World 4. Oh, locked doors, okay. Did that on both sides. Oh dear. That's not very many in game, is it? Oh, it's already dropping off. That's not very good at all. That's really not very good, is it? All-time peak is 1,516. And granted, this is for Steam only, but it's a... You know, multiply it by three or four and you get the total. Twitch viewers. <laughs> but, yep. Yeah, this is the trend. Very nicely dropping trend line. Fantastic. Play account or dropping? Fantastic. That's joyous. If we have a look at Trains in World 3, so bearing in mind that all time peak was 1,500. Trains in World 3 still has 300 people in game. So that is, at the moment, only half the number of players of Trains in World 4. Um. All time peak higher than Trains in World 4, so they've probably lost some uh, players from that. And it was routinely staying above 100, something that Trains in World 4 has already dropped below. He's only half of at the moment. And based on this trend, I wouldn't imagine that rises much. I think that'll stay fairly stable. Uh, if we have a look at Train Simulator 2, which I would assume was much higher, still 70, yeah, 3,000, double the all-time peak of Train Simulator 4. Um, and you can say that was likewise hovering at about 1k for, for most of its existence, and already... Train to mode 4 is, yeah, sort of dropping to that. So it's with like a few days, or like a week after release, and we've dropped down to sort of below what the previous games were pulling years, a year after release. It's ridiculous. I can't believe Dovetail, I think they can keep winning at this strategy, because they very clearly can't. Like, they're losing... They're losing players left, right, and centre. Like they, if they keep going with this, they'll lose all of them. So they, they've got to wake up to that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for putting up with my political spiel, my dovetail spiel. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the livery. I just realised I didn't actually take any fucking screenshots. <laughs>
and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.